This lamp can probably help you sleep better. But how, you might be wondering. No, it's not the color of the light or that pool sunrise effect you saw in the beginning. To understand how it works, we need to understand the concept of sleep cycles. Say you want to wake up at 6 am. Ideally, hitting the bed at 10.30 pm the previous night is a good idea, giving you a solid 7.5 hours of sleep. But if you sleep at 11.30 pm because you had to watch just one more Instagram reel, you'll actually feel more refreshed waking up at 5.30 am instead of 6. I know that sounds strange. So let's dig a little deeper to understand what I mean. When you fall asleep, you go through four main stages. Stage 1 is light sleep. This is the transition between wakefulness and sleep lasting for about 5 to 10 minutes. Then you go into a slightly deeper sleep. In this stage, your body temperature drops and your heart rate and breathing become more regular. Stage 3 is deep sleep. It's harder to wake up during this stage and if you do, you'll feel disoriented. Finally, you go into REM sleep. Most vivid dreams occur during REM sleep. Your muscles are temporarily paralyzed to prevent you from actually getting up and running when you're running a marathon in your dream. All these four stages make up one sleep cycle which lasts around 90 minutes. And you experience several of these sleep cycles during night. While the duration may vary quite a bit from individual to individual, the average seems to be about 90 minutes based on several studies. This fairly old paper, for example, investigated the sleep cycle duration of groups of different aged individuals. While there were many differences in the sleep durations, the average duration was about 90 minutes. Other research papers seem to agree on these two. You can find more details about this in the video description. The basic idea is that waking up in the middle of a sleep cycle can leave you feeling tired and groggy. Ideally, you should wake up at the end of a sleep cycle. Now let's get back to what I mentioned earlier. If you fall asleep at 10.30 pm, assuming a 90 minute sleep cycle, your first cycle will complete at 12 am. The second cycle ends at 1.30 am and this way by 6 am you have completed 5 full sleep cycles, which is ideal. However, if you fall asleep at 11.30 pm and your alarm goes off at 6 am, you will be awakened in the middle of your fifth cycle. A better option would be to wake up at 5.30 am. Despite having less sleep, you would be waking up at the end of your fourth cycle and you likely feel better than waking up at 6 am. Ok, enough with the background. Let's move on to how we can implement this in our lamp to help you sleep better. So the idea is to turn this lamp into something like a replacement for your alarm clock. And the goal is to help you wake up feeling refreshed and ready to go. It does this in two ways. First, it's going to wake you up gently, just like the rising sun. So when it's time to get up, the lamp will slowly start to get brighter, changing colors from a warm orange to a bright white, mimicking a beautiful sunrise over about 5 to 10 minutes. The second part is even smarter. It actually figures out the best time for you to wake up based on when you want to wake up and makes sure you are roused at the end of a sleep cycle. Let me explain how that works. Let's say you sleep at 10.30 pm and you want to be up by 6 am. The lamp does some quick math and calculates the end times for 3, 4 and 5 sleep cycles. That would be 3 am, 4.30 am and then right at 6 am. In this case, the lamp would wake you up at 6 am. Now if you go to bed a bit later, say at 11.30 pm, the same process happens. The end of the third cycle would now be 4 am, the fourth cycle at 5.30 am and the fifth at 7 am. Since your target wake up time is 6 am, it checks which of those cycle end times is the closest. Here it's the end of the fourth cycle at 5.30 am. So that's when the lamp would wake you up. Now you might be wondering, how on earth will this lamp know when I actually fall asleep? Well, the truth is it doesn't know exactly, but it makes a very clever and educated guess. And to do this, we make two key assumptions. First, we figure that most people spend a little time winding down before sleep, 
may be scrolling through their phone or reading a book in bed. Second, we rely on some past research that suggests the average adult takes about 15 minutes to fall asleep after they've laid down for the night. This 15 minute window is also commonly used by those online sleep calculators you might have seen. So here's what we do. We attach a little proximity sensor underneath the lamp. Once you're done with your phone or your book and you're ready to drift off, you simply place it in front of the lamp where the proximity sensor detects it. The lamp then waits for a short period just to make sure you're not picking it back up and then it turns itself off. And that's when it starts a 15 minute countdown assuming that's roughly when you will fall asleep. After those 15 minutes are up, the wake up time is calculated exactly the way I described earlier. The lampshade itself can actually be 3D printed. If you are interested in that, you can find the designs I made linked right below the like button. Now you might notice my lamp has this beautiful wooden frame and base. But it's not wood at all. If you've been following this channel, you might already know what it is. That's right, it's foam board. I'll save you the details of all the marking, cutting and gluing that you've seen in my other videos. What you need to know here is that we need two U-shaped sections. Each has a little protrusion underneath to create space for the proximity sensor and a notch in the middle so they can connect together. For the base that houses the electronics and LEDs, I repurposed an empty roll of cellophane tape. It's important that the width of those U sections we just made matches the diameter of the roll so it can slide in snugly. Then I simply cut a circular disc of foam board and glued it onto the roll using rubber adhesive. Now to diffuse the light, we are going to use an interesting material. This is actually a diffusion sheet salvaged from a broken laptop screen. You can usually find this pretty easily at local electronic scrap shop. This sheet is perfect for our project because it diffuses light beautifully giving it a nice frosted glass look. Now let me show you how I gave the foam board that realistic wood grain appearance. First, I mixed up a light brown acrylic paint and coated all the surfaces with it. It's important to cover the edges evenly as well. Once that's done, let it dry completely. Next, I grabbed a darker shade of brown watercolor and diluted it with a bit of water. Using a sponge, I gently painted the foam board pieces with long linear strokes. Make sure to run the sponge in the same directions across all the surfaces, mimicking a natural grain of wood. Don't forget to cover those edges with darker paint too. Once all the pieces are coated, set them aside to dry completely. Finally, we need an even darker brown to really bring out the detail. I mixed some brown watercolor with just a touch of black paint. Using the same sponge technique, I applied strokes just like we did earlier ensuring they all run in the same direction. Let it dry one last time and you have a beautiful wooden finish. Nobody will even guess there is foam board underneath. While those are drying, let's shift our focus to the electronics. At the heart of our lamp, we'll be using a tiny ESP32 board called the Shao ESP32 S3. This is essential for retrieving the time from the internet and ensuring the LEDs receive the correct signals. We'll also be using a small IR proximity sensor. You don't need a high-end one, a basic affordable one will work just fine. For the light source, we are using a high quality WS2813 addressable LED strip. A good quality strip is vital for accurately reproducing the colors particularly when you're aiming for those relaxing ambient effects in the evening. Before we move on, a big shout out to Seed Studio for kindly providing the parts for this build. They're known for their excellent quality electronics hardware and they also offer professional PCB manufacturing and assembly services. Beyond that, they have a fantastic co-create program. This is a real opportunity for anyone looking to sell their electronic creations but needs support with the business side or getting their products to the market. If that sounds like you, there's a link in the description with all the details. Alright, let's get started by cutting our LED strip down to 10 LEDs. Now for the wiring, follow the connection diagram you see on the screen here. 
To make sure everything's working correctly, I wrote a simple test code that produces a soft, warm white light. Initially, I actually tried using an ESP8266 microcontroller. But as you can see here, something wasn't quite right. One of the LEDs was flashing random colors. I spent a good chunk of time thinking it was a coding issue and went down a bit of a rabbit hole trying to fix it. Eventually I realized the ESP8266 likely wasn't the best choice for reliably driving the addressable LED strip. Thankfully after swapping it with the ESP32, everything worked perfectly. Now we can move on to connecting all the electronics. For the Shao ESP32, I recommend creating a small socket with wires soldered to female headers. I've shown how to make this in a previous video. Unfortunately, right around this point, my soldering iron decided to give up on me. So for the remaining connections, I had to use jumper wires. You can follow the wiring diagram that's on the screen to make your connections. Make sure to leave three female jumper connectors free underneath for the proximity sensor that we'll connect later. Okay, it might not be the prettiest wiring job, but since it'll be hidden inside the lamp, it's perfectly functional for now. Once my new soldering iron arrives, I'll definitely be tidying things up with proper soldered connections. Alright, let's start assembling the lamp. Grab the rubber adhesive and apply a generous amount to the notches of both the U-sections. Let the adhesive air dry for about 5 minutes before sticking the two pieces together. This creates a much stronger bond when you press the pieces firmly together. Next, take the diffusion sheet and carefully wrap it around the base. Apply some rubber adhesive to the overlapping ends and secure them together. Do the exact same thing for the base cover. If you noticed, I didn't glue the diffusion sheet or the base cover directly to the base itself. This is to allow me to easily remove them later if I need to troubleshoot or access the electronics. You'll also notice I've created a small slot in the base. This is specifically for the USB-C cable, allowing us to power the ESP32 and reprogram it if needed without taking everything apart. Finally, carefully slide the entire base assembly between the two glued U sections. Attach the proximity sensor underneath with double-sided tape. And just like that, the main structure of a lamp is complete. Now it's time to upload the main code to our ESP32. I won't be diving deep into the code itself in this video as it would make things quite lengthy and it largely follows the same principles we discussed in the beginning. However, you can find a more detailed explanation along with written build instructions and a complete materials list in the video description as always. Now to be honest, my code might not be perfect so I really encourage you to take a look at it. If you spot any areas of improvement, please do share your suggestions in the comments. I'd love to hear your ideas and learn from you. For now though, the code is functioning as intended and will get a lamp working perfectly. And there you have it. A sleep cycle lamp is finally complete. Doesn't it look fantastic? Honestly, who would ever guess it's not real wood? Plus, we gave a new life to a discarded laptop screen. That's a win-win. Big shout out to Matt from DIY Perks for that brilliant idea. Now using it is simple. Before you start winding down for the night, whether you're catching up on your phone or enjoying a book, just turn the lamp on. Then when you're ready to sleep, place your phone on the table in front of it and drift off. The lamp will handle the rest, gently turning off and waking you up at the optimal time all without disrupting your sleep cycle. I'd like to have a speaker to produce sounds along with the sunrise effect but that's a topic for another video. I really hope you enjoyed building this project along with me. This one definitely pushed my limits, particularly with the research and coding. If you appreciated the effort, a thumbs up would mean a lot. And if you'd like to see more projects like this, consider subscribing. Wish you a very happy and healthy new year, and I'll see you in the next one.